All this music feeling good. What's up, YouTube fam? What's going on? What's going on? Back with another video. Yours truly. I hope everybody's blessed. We are now in the month of August. The year is going by super, super fast. We got five months left. Uh, hopefully, you guys are on track to hitting your goals, doing what you need to do. All right. I'm trying to get as much content out to you before the year is out. I'm um, going to try to do at least two a month. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. All right. Don't crucify me if I don't get it done. But I'm going to try to shoot. That's going to be a goal of mine. You know, so basically one every two weeks. But uh, with that being said, as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Like, share, comment below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this Telegram group chat, guys. All right. Wall Street Family 2.0. Okay, it's in the description box below underneath um, this video. And I'm going to be going over because I got an influx of emails, messages. Steve, how do I take advantage of these like signals when you do drop them? And I'm going to be going over a few of them. I dropped uh, a bevy of them um, with, over the last week. And I'm going to go over step by step how you guys can take advantage of them. Right. These are like free money plays. Okay. Free money plays. All right. I'm, I, I do all the legwork for you. I tell you pretty much where to buy, where to sell. And then, boom, all you got to do is just watch out for price action. You like what you see, jump in, and then we off to the races. All right. So we're going to get this thing rocking and rolling. Got a lot of positive feedback on the last video. Thank you, guys. All right. Again, share this with others. If you know somebody struggling with trading, you know somebody needs some education, uh, just a... a a strategy that's just going to make their life much, much easier, much better. All right. Shoot them this video. Okay. And come join this community. And I'll also, all right, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be traveling a lot this month, but I'm going to try to also do more live webinars for you guys, like morning session. I did one a couple of weeks ago. Let me see where I found the link. Yeah. Usually it'll be like morning sessions. So obviously when the market is moving, um, but I'm going to try to do more of those as well. All right. So let's get to it. And I'm going to show you guys how to take advantage of these signals. All right. And pretty much walk even through how I'm able to, you know, I, I pretty much do the same thing with my go live community. So as a lot of you guys know, I am an educator with I am Mastery Academy. So I do the same thing, pretty much drop signals and show people how to, you know, take advantage. As you can see here, people comment, shout out to Gloria, always showing love. Yes, man. Brilliant, brilliant setups. All right. Um, so pretty much I do the, I do the same thing over here, right? Um, I'll mark up, I'll drop it in the chat. I'll let you guys pretty much know where to buy and sell at. And then all you got to do is just, just follow the map, follow the setup, right? Click on the link and, and just follow, all right? So boom, this is what I want you guys to do. So when I drop a trade setup, so let's do GCAT. Perfect, right? It was went about 80 pips. So that one took a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Um, Right here, I dropped it first on, when did I drop it? First on the 23rd, it was dancing around and then it started to move on the 30th, all right? So like I always tell you guys, man, trading, it just takes time. You got it, like you have to have patience, all right? So again, pretty much I dropped that first trade setup on the 23rd right so full transparency i dropped it gcad right there because the one before it was jpy sells those went phenomenal hopefully you guys were able to take advantage of that if not again i'll show you so gcad sell set up on the 23rd so as you can see on the 23rd right around here it was dancing around the top all right so pretty much it gave you that change of character right Boom, and then you got your retest right here. This was the retest leg. That was the retest leg. And then basically your entry was here. So when I tell you guys pretty much 
watch for entry here. So this was the trade sell setup on the 23rd, all right? So previous high, we got our change of character. Boom, sell here. When I was telling you guys to pretty much sell there. All right? So what I mean by sell here or sell there is, again, if you watch the previous video, you should know I'm big on close above, close below. What does that mean? Basically, before you buy or sell, you're waiting for price. All right? So if I'm selling, I need a bearish candlestick to close below a bullish candlestick, the body of the entire candle. So for example, right here, I would need, because that's the last bullish candle, I would need a bearish candlestick to close below it. All right, I'm going to zoom in real close so you can see. So you see this entire candle right here, including the wick. So this candle did not get closed below by this bearish candle. Back up a little bit. All right? It didn't close. See? It didn't close. It was actually this one hour candle that closed below this bullish. All right. And after this one hour candle closes, your next entry candle, what's going to be here on this one hour. All right. I'm using the one hour as the prime example. So this is the entry candle. All right. That's your entry candle. So the moment that one hour candle opens, so if it's like right now, um, it's 6.53, my time zone. Uh, it's Sunday, August 4th. And 6.53. So basically, uh, when the 7 o'clock candle opens, that's the candle you want to jump in. All right? You jump in on that candle, and then you place your stop loss above the previous high. So like right around here. And then, as you can see, there's your move to the downside. All right. That one dropped about 71 pips. Now, remember, this is where a lot of people screw up. When they're up on a trade setup, because I get this asked all the time, Steve, where do I take profit? When do I know to put up my stop loss? All right. And um, I always tell people, listen, when it comes to the risk management part, that part must actually be done first before you enter any trade setup in the market, all right? The biggest issue that I find with a lot of traders is not even understanding the strategy. It's the risk management part. They don't even know what they're risking. They don't know what their target is. I tell people this all the time. Like, how, like That's like investing in a property, a house. You want to buy a house, and you don't even know what deposit you're going to put down to buy that house. Or you're trying to buy a car and you don't even know what type of deposit you're going to put down. Like, how do you not know your risk to reward before you buy? You click buy or sell? And if you're doing that, I'm telling you right now, you're not trading, you're gambling. You're gambling. So the risk money management part, the risk to reward, it has to be done before you buy or sell. All right? Because... Again, this dropped 71 pips. As you can see here, price pulled back. All right? 71 pips, honestly, that's good trading. That's good trading. Most people, when they're trading, they say it. On average, they collect about 10 to 20 pips. Me personally, anything over, you know, 50, 70 pips, I'm happy. My target, usually every single week on a setup, I'm looking for 100 pips minimum. 100 pips makes me happy. If somebody said, hey, Steve, you know, if the, the trading gods came down and said, I will guarantee you 100 pips. And as you guys know, the market moves way more than 100 pips on, on setups, right? Matter of fact, on this GCAD, this ended up after this pullback dropping well over 100 pips. It dropped about 190 before pulling back. But if somebody told me, hey, I guarantee you 100 pips on every trade setup you take, from here on out, I will take it 100%. That's going to flip, double, triple, quadruple my trading count in a heartbeat. You know what 100 pips can do? All right, do you know what just 50 pips can do? Okay, so understanding your risk to reward is major and it's very important. It's actually more important than understanding the strategy. A lot of times people, you know, they're scouring 
YouTube channels, trying to learn a strategy. They're joining so many different groups and trying to learn that person's strategy and that person's strategy. And they never learn risk management. Get a calculator, guys. This is not hard. All right. You go to Google. Okay. Forex calculator. Pops up right there. Forex calculator. My FX book. FXTM. Um, you know, baby pips, whatever. Get a calculator and let it do the work for you. All right, let it do the work for you. Add your currency, right? Euro, whatever. Put your balance, how much you want to risk. That must be done before you enter a buy or sell. Because if you don't know what you're risking, you don't know what your reward is, I promise you, again, you're gambling. And eventually, like all gamblers, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. There's a reason why the house always wins. All right. Very seldom few people come out ahead. Okay. So, boom. If I get in here, I already know I'm looking for price to create new lows, right? Broke here, dropped 70 pips, did not create this low, and then pulled back. If price pulls back, now, mind you, if I'm up 70 pips, I'm protecting at least half of that. I always tell people, once I, me personally, once I'm above about, 40, 50 pips, right? Like, I'll be honest, 10 pips doesn't do it for me. Some people move up their stop loss after 10 pips. I'll be like, that's that's nothing. Because if I move up my stop loss, I'm up 10 pips, I cover five pips. That, I'm walking away with crumbs. Anybody who actually trades knows that. Like, what's five pip going to do? Nothing, right? So I like to make sure I'm comfortably up. So about 40, 50. So if I'm up 70 pips, by then I'm covering at least half. What's half of 70 pips? 35. So boom, I walk away with something. Price pulled back. Okay, now remember, this entire here, this entire area, this is the zone I'm looking to sell in. That's why this was my change of character. This is my retest. This inside here is the zone I'm looking to sell in. Okay. So when I'm dropping these markups, and then again on July 30th, I said, hey, GCAT update, moving slow, but eventually the drop will come. So look, first retest pulled back, right? Then it pulled back again. Once again, based on this markup, it's still in the entry zone, all right? As long as price doesn't exceed this high, I'm good. All I'm waiting for, as far as entry, I'm waiting for a bearish candle to close below a bullish. That's my entry, stop loss above. And then I'm just waiting for the drop, okay? And FYI, no matter how long you stare at the screen, that's not going to make the price move, okay? This market will not move because you're staring at it, because you're checking your phone every five seconds. It's not going to move, all right? As you can see, by the time I um, gave out the signal, which was on the 23rd, we didn't get the full drop until all Friday, August 2nd. So more than seven days. All right. So that just goes to show you, you have to be patient. You have to be patient. When it comes to trading good quality setups, it's going to take a minute. All right. But after that retest, as you can see, boom, price started dropping. And I know price is dropping because what? Keeps creating new lows. Keeps pulling back and creating new lows, put in back, and then keep creating new lows, pulled back, spike did not create a new low, right? A body did not close below here. And then you got your reversal. But at this point, you're up 180 pips. By then you should have definitely cashed out. All right. So when I'm dropping these markups, guys, I'm pretty much telling you, hey, Buy here, sell here. All you have to do is just watch. So I'll tell you, I'll say still watching for bearish drop. That means I'm still waiting for that drop to come. Right? Look at the structure of this. I'm going to zoom in here. This is the same setup right here. Let me remove all this. It's the same one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same one. Look at it. 
from the Telegram. For all you guys that be missing out, I'm working, I'm at school, I'm at blah, blah, blah. You had seven days to get in the straight setup. So if you needed money for the summer or anything like that, over 150 pips, trust me. You drop a nice standard on there, you know, you flip your account real fast, real easy. You had more than enough time to jump in this, all right? There you go. There you go. There's the pullbacks. There's the pullbacks, which led to the drop, all right? Boom. That was GCAD. Again, also on the 30th, I also told you about EuroCAD. As you can see, this was dropped July 30th, EuroCAD. I did all the work for you. Supply zone, change of character. That means price broke and change of character. All right. Refer back to all my previous videos, guys. I go over this all the time, all the time. If you literally just watch the last just four or five YouTube videos that I've dropped and you really study this like the back of your hand, guys, you'll, you'll, you'll understand you have something very, very powerful here. All right. Change of character. And then boom. I told you where to sell. You got your retest, sell here. Right, EuroCAD. So as you can see, nothing changed. I didn't race this. So, you know, I can show you guys, hey, this is what happened, boom. Right, so right before that big reversal on Friday, sell here. All right. Now, technically, your retest came over here. So pretty much your entry could have been anywhere around here or after this close below there. Boom. And then again, my stop loss is above. Ah, what am I doing? Give me a second. Perfect. So let's say it's dropped right here. I got a nice 82 pip move. And that's saying if you got in right here. If you got in earlier up here or up here, up here, all right, you actually caught a little bit more, right? About 90 pips. But we'll say 80, between 80 to 90 pips. So before this reversed on you, you had more than enough time to make some money, more than enough time to move up your stop loss, right? If you're up 90 pips, there's no way you just let 90 pips flow. You got to cover at least half. Half of 90 pips is 45. If you're up 80 pips, half of that is 40. 70 pips, again, 35. Point is, you're up. And if you're a person, you know, hey, all I need is 3%. All I need to do is grab 30 pips, 40 pips, 50 pips, whatever the case may be, then boom, mission accomplished. All right? So again, I'm giving you the answers and I'm telling you what to do. So if you didn't sell here, perfect. Even on this small little pullback where I'm telling you, watch for sell, right? Watch for sell. Let's say you miss this again. Price drop, give you that little retest. Watch for sell here. And that's exactly what happened, right? So again, all you have to do is just be able to read. That part I can't help you with. If you don't know how to read, sorry, there's nothing I can do there. Hook on phonics. Um, yeah, right? Follow directions and boom. Now, Steve, what if the trade doesn't work out? Then it doesn't work out. That's the whole point of risk and reward. First things first, risk. It's not reward and risk. It's risk and reward. So if I'm entering a trade, let's say right here, boom, and my stop loss is right above there, and I get taken out, okay, I lost 23 pips, as opposed to gaining 82. I know 23 pips is not going to hurt my account unless I'm extremely over leveraged. 
or I'm doing some next level trading. I got, you know, 100 positions on one trade setup. All right. I'm not saying you only got to risk one to three percent, but be smart. Right. Boom. That's your OCAD. This GN cell setup. Now, this one, I'm not going to lie, didn't really pull back. All right. And I didn't take this one myself. This one just, yeah, there you go. See the markup? It just dropped. This was actually out of all the regular currency pairs, um, especially um, cross pairs. GN and EN, they, they just gone. There was no pullback unless you, you know, happened to just jump in here. There was really no pullback. And again, if you watch the last video, this is why I was teaching you guys, hey, understanding the close above and below. So when price came up to this supply zone, I don't start selling until, right? Because I'm at a daily supply zone, daily. So that, need, that means I need a daily price action. I need daily price action, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, because I'm at a daily area, I need daily price action. Always remember, whatever time frame you are on, that's the time frame you need the price action to happen. Whatever time frame. So if I'm on a daily time frame, a weekly time frame, I need weekly price action. Daily, daily. Four hour, four hour. One hour, one hour. Five minute, five minute. I can't look at a daily and then go down to the five minute. So if I'm watching the daily, perfect. I know. What's the rule? I need a bearish candle to close below a bullish. None of these daily candles gave me a bearish. So if I would have jumped down to the one hour, which a lot of people try to do, and then this is what happens. You get caught up. You see something like this. You see a bearish close like this. Perfect example. Oh, I got a bearish close on the one hour. So let me start selling here. And then look what happened. Boom. You get tagged out. Oh, what happened? I followed the rules, Steve, and I still got tagged out. Because you are at a daily supply zone. You need daily price action. Yes, you can try and sneak down. You can try and sneak down. But understand, this is going to be a higher risk. Safer. Why? Once again, daily. So... I wait for that daily price action. Perfect. Bearish close below. What do you think this wick is pulling back? That's the retest on the smaller time frame. All right, that's the retest on the smaller time frame. Now, didn't really happen on the one hour. So let me go down to like a minute, 15 minute, and you can kind of see it better. There you go. I'll put this vertical line. Now, also another trick too, and I've taught this a while back, but just a reminder, guys, if you have your MACD, line everything up with your MACD, right? Make the strategy even more, right? Give it more confluence, more power to your analysis. So if I'm looking to sell, once I got this daily close, right? That was my daily close. So basically my change of character, wait for a retest on your MACD. There was my retest. There was my retest. Line everything up. So now this is where I sell. Right? After that bearish close there, lines up with my retest on the MACD. And now, voila, I got my sell set up. Right, 100, this went all the way for about 300 pips, really more. Okay, so that's another way is basically wait for the daily price action. Right, kind of like, let me go back to GCAT. Wait for the daily price action. All right. Here we have the daily price action. Actually, we did not have the daily price action here. So, no, no daily close. 
Yeah, this long wick invalidated it. So let me go to EN. Perfect. But again, all the New Zealand pairs just pretty much took off. So you see that? Came to a, I think this one was a weekly supply. Right? Or daily, actually. And then you got your daily close. And then you see this pullback here. That's your retest on a smaller time frame. Well, it's actually happening now. This is the one hour retest. So let's see how this plays out once it comes inside here. Give us another drop. But this, same thing like GN. We go down to the 15 minute. There's your retest. Right? Or retest right here. All right? Because now once this close below, again, that's your daily close. Below. Pretty much a change of character. And there's your retest. See how it lines up with the MACD? There's your retest. There's your entry to sell. There's your entry to sell. All right. That was GN. Basically, the same thing with EN, but EN just dropped. If I'm not mistaken, even Bitcoin. Right. And of course, this works on everything. All right. Yep. There you go. Bitcoin. So everybody thought Bitcoin was going up. Oh my God, it's at 70. It's going to keep going. Nope. So again, you see? See on the MACD? See right here? Because remember, if on the MACD, if it's going bullish, that means it should be creating new highs. So the moment this was going bullish, I was looking, I was like, is it going to surpass this previous high? Right? Remember, this leg coming down, all the bullish candles in between, that's your supply zone. That's your supply zone. That's your supply zone. And what happened when price came up? Right? See what I mean? You got your close below. Right? Got our close below. And go down to a smaller time frame. Once you confirm the daily close below, daily close below, which causes a change of character. Now, you can just wait on the retest right there. There was your MACD retest. There's your price action pullback. That's your entry, right? You're just waiting for a close below to sell again. See, close below, I get in on the next candle and there's my sell. There's my sell, ladies and gentlemen, right? So again, I'm already giving you the answers when I'm dropping these markups, all you got to do is follow. So all you had to do is just wait, let this pull back. I even did it on the MACD for you guys to point it out. Wait for a retest there. So you see, wait for the retest. The retest came here. There was your sell opportunity, right? So again, you had more than enough time, right? At this point, GCAT taking off, EuroCAD took off, 40 pips went down for 80. Um, what else? What else? That was pretty much it. And that was it for last week. We took more trades in our group. If you want access to the other group, guys, shoot me an email. Email is in the description box below. Hey, Steve, I want to be a part of the community. Guys, there's no monthly fee. There's no not. And I'm just going to ask you to set up an account. And then, boom, send me a screenshot. You, you set up your account. And then you get added. That's it. I'm not... 
not these other gurus out here. Hey, I need five thousand dollars, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, right? No. All right. Shoot me an email, let me know. Uh the JPYs, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little salty with the JPYs. I don't know why I missed it. I was kind of focused on gold and, and other pairs, but I will catch the cell setup. Oh, this is so sexy. Just been dropping, been dropping like clockwork. But again, see, price came up. And look, so every time I'll use the daily, price is closing below. See, price closed below, price closed below, price closed below. I will go down to a smaller time frame and I will catch the retest. So close below, right here. That was my daily close below. So I always refer back to a higher time frame, basically daily, weekly, monthly, and I'm looking where was the last close below, basically close below or close above. So in this case, close below. So as long as I'm getting bearish candles, closing below a bullish candle, I'm gonna continue selling. All I have to do is go down to a one hour, 15 minute, and do what? Wait for a retest. And as you can see, boom, I'm using the vertical line to show you how it's in conjunction. So entry here, right? Retest on the MACD here. See that? Entry here. Retest on the MACD here. Right? As long as price not closing above the previous high, that's it. And how do I know when to enter? Again, if I'm selling, what am I looking for? A close below. I'm looking for a bearish candle to close below a bullish. That's the price action. Boom, close. I enter here, stop loss above. Boom. See that? Again, right there, retest. So that's my entry here. That's my entry here. This is my retest here. What the hell? Retest there. And last one. All right? So every time we retest, I'm looking to sell. All right? Until the market shows me otherwise on the higher time frame. So let's say price stops right around here. This is technically a demand zone. And just like it did over here, notice. Notice how this bullish candle closed above that barrier. So now I'm looking for retest to buy up. So now that we're over here, if I get a bearish can, I mean a bearish, not a bearish, but a bullish candle to close above one of these bearish, I will go down to a small time frame and catch the retest. And then I can use the MACD as a guide to line everything up. And you can do this on any pair, any setup. Matter of fact, we caught this with our indices. We killed it last week with our indices. Boom, look at that. All right? Look at that, beautiful. German 30. Look at that. Watch for sell here. Basically, what I mean when I say watch, just watch price action. As soon as you get a close below a bullish candle, you need the body to close below it. Like it did here. Entry and then stop off and then voila. Right? Voila. All because I understood what was happening. One, we all see what's going on in the markets, right? The data came out this Friday and we are doing terrible as an economy. So no surprise here. We've been talking about this for months in my group. Hey guys, be prepared. The only reason why all the indices have been going up is the election year. We're in August, basically in three months, it's election. So I won't be surprised if we just see this drop, drop, free fall, 
all the way until next year. All right, the market told us. I've been telling everybody pretty much since the beginning of the year, guys, there's going to be a big drop. There's going to be a big drop, right? This is due for a big pullback. It's been on an uptrend basically all year. For the last two years, really. And now, boom, right? So price action tells you. So the moment it happened up here, I got this bearish close. I go down to a small time frame, and now I start looking for sales. And look at that. Line everything up. See on the MACD? I'm, there's my retest, right? Because when this went bullish, did it break this previous bullish wave? No, right? And there was my daily close, basically my change of character. That was my retest leg. Wait for price action to close below. So entry here, boom, and voila. And then there you go. See that? And then there you go. See that? Then it pulled back even more. But even when it pulled back, right, overall, still going down, gave you another sell setup, right? And you can just keep doing this, guys. Keep doing this over and over. So when I'm dropping these markups, guys, in the chat, all you have to do is just follow. Follow the price action, all right? When I tell you, hey, wait here, wait for the buy. So in the case of GN, EN, I'm not going to lie, those were gone. Even though they dropped and went according to plan, uh, didn't really give you a pullback unless you were trading on a smaller time frame. But other than that, you just wait, like kind of how price is doing now. So now it's really giving us that one hour retest. So perfect. As long as price don't break the high, I'm still looking for a sell. As long as you give me that one hour retest, I get a close below, I'm going to start looking for a sell. And I'm looking for price to break this low to continue the downtrend. If not, we can potentially head back up. All right. So I just wanted to cut this video to clear up some things. Um, like I said, I was getting some messages. You were like, yeah, they love. When I'm dropping signals and all that, but they don't know when to buy, sell. They get scared, nervous, whatever the case may be. So I just wanted to clear up some stuff. Hopefully that cleared it up for you guys. All right. Like I said, I'm going to be shooting for about two YouTube videos a month going forward for the rest of the year. Um, just dropping content, dropping as much valuable information as possible. Again, guys, share this with as many people. All right, if you know somebody struggling, share it with them. Let them know, hey, join the Wall Street Community 2.0. And if you want further education, guys, shoot me an email. Not enough you guys shoot me an email. Shoot me an email. Hey, Steve, I need access, All right? My future's on the line here. My career's on the line here. The economy is about to go to hell. It's about to be a shit show out here. I want to learn how to trade. And I want to be around like-minded individuals. Guys, guys like-minded individuals that are working that are working on their craft. Look at this, working on their craft, working on their craft. Good job, man. Look at all these posts right here, man. Pierre, shout out to Pierre, man. Shout out my boy James. Look at all this, man. This is how you get better, by working on your craft. All right? So let's get it. Let's go, guys. I appreciate your time, your energy. As always, like, share, comment below. Let me know what you feel. Um. Telegram link is in the description box. Also, my email's there. Shoot me an email. If you have any questions, any concerns, hit me up. Follow me on social media. It's your boy, Steve Lindor. Hopefully, you guys, again, got massive value out of this. I always appreciate the love. I will see you on the next call. Take care. God bless. We got five months left before the year is out. Let's turn up. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm out.